If you're going to be installing the cooler on an AMD motherboard, we're going to be using the stock clips. There's no additional steps to take at this stage. If you're going to be using an Intel motherboard, the first step is to install the backplate relevant to your motherboard. So we get two backplates with a CPU cooler. There's one labelled LJ1700 or 1851, which is the one I'm going to be using. And there's also one labelled LJ1200 if you've got an older motherboard. So the first thing you want to do is remove the double-sided adhesive, which is going to help the backplate stick to the back of the motherboard. This is just a temporary build for me, so I'm going to leave it in place. And then we can go ahead and line the backplate up with the back of the motherboard. Then you're going to want to grab the correct bag of standoffs for your motherboard. For LGA 1851, 1700 and 1200, you're going to want to use the black standoffs. And we're simply going to screw one onto each corner. So for the particular build that we're doing, our fans are in the right orientation. They're going to have the good side of the fans facing into the case. And because I'm installing at the top, it's going to be exhausting hot air out the top of the case. But if, for example, you wanted to have your radiator installed on the side of the case set to intake, you would have to turn the fans around and have the ugly side of the fans on display, which wouldn't look very good. But Thermaltake have thought of this, and it is possible to replace the fan blades, and they include three reverse blade fans with the AIO. So you could have the good side of the fans on display, no matter whether you want to have your AIO set to intake or exhaust. To remove the fan blades, all you're going to want to do is go behind and give them a little push forward and they are simply going to pop off. Take your reverse fan blade, line it up, and simply clip it into place. Once you've done this a few times, Thermaltake do recommend putting 0.1 mils of grease into the bearings, and they do include this with the AIO. But because I'm gonna have this set to exhaust at the top, I'm just gonna leave the fans the way they come out of the box. So we need to join our three fans together, and they're gonna connect magnetically. All we need to do is bring the fans into contact, and they'll clip into place. Then we need to connect our fan cable. It's also going to connect magnetically. So just bring it into contact and it's simply going to clip into place. So in terms of the cables coming from the fans, we've got a four pin PWM cable, which is going to go into our CPU fan header and a three pin five volt ARGB cable, which we're going to plug into an ARGB header on the motherboard. We can then set our fans onto the radiator and we'll secure the fans into place using the included long radiator screws. We can then set our top fan stroke radiator bracket into place and then we'll secure it into place using the included short radiator screws. If we go on to take a look at our pump, we've got a screen on it and it simply pulls off. And coming from the pump, we've got two cables. We've got a four pin PWM cable, which we're gonna plug into the pump header on the motherboard. And we've got this USB extension cable. So in the box, we get the other end of the cable, which simply plugs into here. And then we're gonna plug the other end into USB 2.0 header on our motherboard. Last thing to do is install the bracket to secure the pump to the motherboard. If you're using an Intel motherboard, you're going to use the Intel bracket, which is this one here. Simply line it up with the notches on the pump. And once you've got everything lined up, push and it's going to lock into place. You're simply going to secure the pump to the brackets we've already installed on the motherboard and then use four of the thumb screws to secure the bracket to the motherboard. I'm going to be installing this on an AMD motherboard, so I'm going to take our AMD bracket line it up, and then we'll simply push it into place. Then what we're gonna to want to do is take one of these brackets, put one in at this side, and tighten the thumb screw loosely, and then we'll turn it around and do exactly the same thing on the other side. So just before we set our radiator down to place, I'm just gonna get the cables passed through to the back coming from our fans. And this gray header at the top is our CPU fan header. So we'll just bring the PWM cable back through, and we'll get it plugged into place. We've got an ARGB header just here, so we'll bring the ARGB cable through and get it plugged in. And then at this stage, we can line the bracket up at the top. And then we'll secure things into place using the five original screws. Next, I'm going to add some thermal paste to the center of the CPU. It is included with the I.O. And we need to remember to remove the plastic protection from our cold plate. The other thing that I'm going to do is wrap our cables up and round the cold plate, being held in place by this top bracket, where it's going to help organize them towards the top of the case. Then I'm just going to want to get the top bracket over the clip on the motherboard and then we'll get the bottom bracket into place. So now that's both clips in place, all we need to do is tighten up both the thumb screws in turn. Not the easiest to show you with the radiator in place, but our CPU opt header is just below our CPU fan header here at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and get the PWM cable plugged into here. And then I'm just going to pull all the excess fan cable through to the back. I'm also going to pass the USB cable through to the back and we'll plug the USB cable into the bottom of the motherboard. And then we can go ahead and attach our screen to the I.O. 
and we'll remove the plastic protection. So in terms of controlling the lighting on the fans, you're going to do that using your motherboard's RGB package. To control our AIO screen, we're going to need to download Thermaltake's RGB+. Plus. So we'll head down to the bottom and click on Download Now. We can follow the instructions to install the app. And then we're going to click on Lighting. So the first thing you'll notice is that our screen is not up the right way round. So we can press the arrow buttons. There we go, our text is now up the correct way. So now we've got things up the right way, we are able to adjust the colors on the screen. So we've got our text color, background color, visual color one and visual color two. So blue works quite well for around the outside, but for visual color one, for example, we might want to change this to red to apply it better with the theme I've got set in the case. So you can play about with the different colors, getting things just right. The other thing, we can change what comes up on the screen. So at the moment it's set to CPU temperature, if we want to pick CPU frequency, we can change that and click on Apply. And you'll notice that it is now coming up on our AIO screen. There's a whole variety of different sensor information that we can have here. Um, the other thing we can do is go for a carousel. We can pick what we want to appear at the moment. Everything's selected and we just click on Apply. And what's now happening is it's cycling through all the different effects. And again, we've got options for changing the speed if we want things to appear for longer or less time. Okay, so let's see what other options we've got. So we can have the weather. We'll click on OK. It'll just enable location and close that. And then head back to weather. And click on apply. We can have the clock. We've got three different styles, so we'll click on apply. But a big favorite for me has always been the upload file and Thermaltake have got some good images in here. Let's try this one out and see what it looks like. Click on OK and apply. But I think I'm going to go for my favorite one. Click on OK and apply. 